Get your morning started the right way with the AM Caffeine Morning Show. What up, what up? AM Caffeine Show. It's your boy DOC. It's your girl Marlo J. What's wrong with this goofy and, microphone? I mean, listen, I'll just say it for oh. him. And that's the smoothest of the deal. Hey. That's when we have guests. That's embarrassing. Let's do it again. It's your boy Watch DOC. On. What? We're doing it again because he messed up. Okay, okay go sorry. Okay, I was ahead. I was into the intro. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. It's your boy DOC. It's your girl Marlo J. DJ Smooth Bello D. What's going on? It's the AM Caffeine Show crew. What else? Yeah, what's yeah, up, yeah, everybody? Yeah. What's happening? What's happening? Everybody good? Yeah, what it do? What it do? It's just day um, number 177 of the quarantine. You know, right. I'm so here not going crazy. <laughs> right. Well, hey. Hey, I noticed you have a haircut. Did you go outside? Like, how did you get a haircut? Um, I did it like I did in college, man. I just pulled out the clippers. And just cut you my hair. Don't it yourself. No, okay, that's why it's a little. Yeah, we we're not trying to be out. In, in, yeah, I you got see it. Like the line is just a little off. A little off. But, it's all yeah. good. That's okay. Nobody even noticed it's smooth. AM Caffeine Show uh, special guest today. First off, let's shout out our guest from last week. Shout out to yeah. Mark Chestnut, who is the got, chestnut. So many jams. And Marlo, you was looking mad thirsty. I kept telling you. He's okay, first dirty. of all, I was not because was I was just listen. I was giving him some flowers. Just like I'm gonna give Miss Moni. Okay. And I just thought that he should know. How you felt? Thought that he was amazing and beautiful okay. in the face area. <laughs> in the face area. Oh, and I was respecting. I respect that he has married with a full ass wife. He did a whole rap about her. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> I understand how it looked from the outside looking in. No, because you're a hater, Doc. He already said that you was the creepy one on Best Man. <laughs> <laughs> So AM Caffeine Show, special, special guest today. Special. Um yo, yo, yo. Just, just trying to get her on for a minute, but you know, she she's like from the UK, but she might be Jamaican. She she got a gang of jobs. So it's hard to really get her to uh to pin her down. But man, let me tell you, one of the pillars of um, I don't even want to say hip hop for, for females. I'm just gonna say one of the pillars for hip hop in general, and definitely my my generation, that the era that I came up uh, in hip hop, she, was, I think her voice was um, very, very important. The lyrical content, the consciousness that she spoke about from the time that she came into the game, never really switched. Um, Yo, she's a groundbreaker. She's a never, groundbreaker. Never switched her perspective. Always kept kept it the same. Um, nominated for two Grammys. Pew, pew, pew. Friends. Work with Whitney Houston, the one and only incredible mother F and Moni Love in a That was generous. That was a very generous intro. I appreciate. Very true. Moni, how are you? How are you doing? I'm good. You know, I'm I'm considered uh and it's an essential worker, you know. Right. I know it's a it's a it's a touchy phrase for many people right, right. now. So I go out, I still go out into the station every day, um, the radio station every day. I'm on air in Atlanta on um, KISS 104.1 in Atlanta. And um, it's a Cox communication company, but my building's like a, they've sent everybody home. It's like a ghost town. It's like a movie. Like right. I, mean, I expect to see tumbleweeds every day when I go in because it really is, the building is on lockdown and only myself and the other um, remaining radio on air folks are in and we barely even see each other anymore. Right. Um, and it's, it's, it's uh, TV also. So the radio is downstairs and the TV is upstairs. So the, the cameraman is still coming in. Um, the news anchors are still coming in obviously because they have to deliver, deliver the news. And right. So even though we're a, a, a music formatted radio station that I'm actually on from two to seven, we still have to, because of what's going on, interject the news, which we don't usually, but, right. um, you know, because it's a media company and, and Cox has chosen, okay, we're going to use our, our music forums also to deliver hourly news so that people know what's going on and can keep updated. So. Right. I, I do go in every day still and conduct my show from um, from two to seven, but the rest of my family is at my home quarantining. Right. Wow. Wow. You, um, um, I'm sorry. So I wanted to start at the beginning, but I'm gonna piggyback off of what you were just saying about being an essential worker and having to give information 
to the public. From your perspective, um, how do you feel about the information that we're getting from the higher ups, from the government, and how much of that do you feel um, is truthful? Well, Al, what we deliver every day is um, on, on the music format stations is, is hourly, um, it's once an hour, and it's uh, because uh, WSB, which is our, our news, uh, award-winning news conglomerate at the broadcasting company that I work for, they, they, they pretty much put it into vignettes mm -hmm. that play on the music forum stations once an hour. Um, so I get it at the same time the public gets it. Right. Uh, and from, there's also a TV screen on in my studio. So I get to look at it to try to keep as updated as possible myself, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it can be very confusing. Right. It can be very, yeah, it can be very confusing. And especially in Georgia with what's going on with the governor and then the governor opening up businesses mm -hmm. and then the president throwing the governor under the bus. It, it really can right. be very confusing. Right. It can be president yeah, Marla. Are you crazy, sir? Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Girl. Right. It you know, it can be so mind spinning. And so you know, it's so like you know somewhere in those in those um in the middle of the country, somewhere somebody said somebody's going to buy Lysol right now to drink it. Right. Like, I'm like, hey, you know, hey, Friday hey. when I left the building, you know, we were saying amongst us, I did manage to see a couple of folks across the room were yelling at each other because we can't stand next to each other. And I'm like, oh, I'm, what are you going to do this weekend? And it's like, oh, we're going to go home and shoot up some Lysol in our veins. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> like really? Like, what are, what are we talking about here, right. higher ups? Like, Absolutely you guys ridiculous. are confusing the general public and saying these things that... So, you know, it seems like the government was then scrambling to defuse Absolutely. that that was right. said right. before we really do wind up getting some stupid people somewhere right. sitting down trying to shoot up Lysol in their veins. Right. Like, oh, let me disinfect myself. Like, what? Right, right. So, so are you standing with the governor or the mayor? I stand with me, right. okay? <laughs> I st because I can't make heads or tails of... Right. You know, so I stand with me and we're keeping this quarantine energy going. I don't trust yes. anything. Like, Marlo, I need a fill in. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's uh, bad. It's bad over here. You know what I'm saying? The only reason why I don't need my head on is because I have locks. You know right. what I mean? And I can, I can do what I need to do myself with that. But I, we're not, my, my son's not going for a haircut. You know, my daughters are, they play beauty shop in the house amongst themselves. Marlo, they got the CHI blow dryer with oh, the pool on it. Okay. <laughs> Girl, yes. And the good, and the good, plat, and the good platinum press. I with, 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 with the with the stuff you put on before you put the flat yes. iron uh, on it and yes. make it nice uh, and silky. Yes, and they the, the, the we girls. The sisters are doing it for themselves. Yes, honey. Yes. <laughs> yes. I need a pedicure bad. Because, yeah, because we're not. I polished my own we're nails not. clear, and I polished my own toenails clear, and I braided my own hair last week because I said somebody something's got to get. <laughs> because, because because we're not and because we're not playing any games. My family. That's why I'm glad you said. You know who do I stand with? The main, the, you know, the governor or the or the president. I don't stand with anybody. I stand with me. I'm seeing. Right. I'm seeing the fact that people are people are dropping out. Yeah. From yep. this virus, and I'm not taking any chances. I'm waiting for the health. Those are the people that really know. Okay. Well, when it's clear, <laughs> is 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 is, is like, the health. I don't want to hear nobody but them. Right. Uh, the health organizations, the physicians, the, the, you know, the scientists, those are the ones that are like, they can tell us what's happening with, you know, how much more damage this virus is going to do, how many more people it's going to claim, when the peak is going to rise, when the peak is going to drop. Right. So I'm not, I'm not, you know, the plumber can't come to me and tell me something about electrical <laughs> systems. Because right. I'm not going to listen to the plumber <laughs> right. talking to me about electrical systems, dude. Right. What do you know about electrical systems? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm so not gonna, I don't even care. And I'm not going to I'm not going to listen to the electrician trying to tell me something about outside irrigation. Like right. no. That's not what you do. <laughs> I need mean, everybody stay in their lanes. I want to right. hear from the doctors, the physicians, and all about everybody in health, okay? <laughs> That's it. Right. Exactly. 
Yeah, it's definitely a crazy time. Let's um let's get on something a little lighter than Oof, that. Yeah. Um, so Moni, being from the UK, who was who was the first person you ever heard rap? Like what was the rap, the first rap song you ever heard? Um I'm trying to, to uh, think of the timeline. It was between Sugar Hill Gang and, and, and um, Grandmaster Flesh and Furious Five, Melly Mel with, with the message. It was between those two. In England, we got those two. You got that. At right. the same, like, kind of like at the same time. And who, was, um, who was like a popular um, English rapper? Like before, before that you, you looked up to and you were like, yo, they are killing it out here. And, you wasn't sure if you know anybody else knew about them. Um, well, no. When we started getting it, a scene budded in England. A scene was born in England, and I wasn't the first of the scene that was born in England. There were people. I had predecessors in England. Right. Right. Who like who? And, like, who? Well, there's a group of girls called the Cookie Crew, and they were like big sisters to me. They they blew everything out the box. The they. Crew? The Cookie Crew. I want and you to know I'm going to look them up because I want to hear. It's two girls. It's, it's two, two girls. girls. They're also from South London. One's named Remedy, MC Remedy, Remedy, and um, the other one is uh, MC Susie Q. And they formed uh, the Cookie Crew. And they were of the first set. When England first got hit with the hip-hop bug, they were of the first um, set of girls to be MCs out of England. And they so would, would, would you say, looking at them, were those... Was that the influence to make you say, I can do this too. I want to do this. I think definitely, I do that. definitely. Because I used to run, I used to run with them and I was like little sister to them. So between them and between hearing what Shantae was doing stateside, that get, that put the battery in my back pretty much. And was that like a, um, an underground scene or a, a, like a club that everybody went to and spit? Yes, like absolutely. There was a club called Spats and it was um, in a little street off of Tottenham Court Road and it was very small. It was very small and it was just a lunchtime thing that ran for on a Saturday for two hours. But anybody from anywhere in London that was into the scene, this new budding scene, this new music, this new dance form, this new form of expression, we would cram that club on a Saturday for two, from 12 until two. And it was, that forum was created and presented to us by a man named Tim Westwood in wow. England. Wow. And so he's responsible, Tim Westwood is responsible very much, whole handedly for creating um, a scene and, and in England, a place for us to go, a radio show for us to listen to because Tim Westwood has had his long running show and is still on the radio in England. Oh, we need this documentary. We need well, this documentary. I, had, I had no idea that it's, he spans back to yes, that. Yes, he, yeah. No That's idea. crazy. Yeah, he yeah. does. He spans all the way back. He was the only person that was giving us a place we could go to to hear the music and dance. And, and we had a full fledged scene. It wasn't just about emceeing. We had... I was in a crew. I wasn't emceeing at the time. The cookie crew were emceeing at the time. I was like their little sister coming up behind them, but I wasn't really rhyming at the time. I was, I was breaking. I was breaking. What? Yeah. What, what, what yeah. You were breaking? What, what was your, uh, what was your dance name? Not telling you that. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a dance name. No, I was a pop locker, and my name was Princess Pop. <laughs> Princess Pop. Yeah. Bow, bow. <laughs> um, so at that time, was there, because it, it was it was a budding sound, was there any type of um, racial divide, you know, between blacks and whites, or was just everyone's finding this new art form, so everybody was a fan? It was everyone. Dope. It was everyone. It really was genuinely everyone. It really? Was black, it was black. It was white. It was um, Spanish. It was like, it was Spanish kids, Italian kids. Kids like me that's from Caribbean descent, African kids, um, and straight up English kids, um, Irish kids, because you, you have to think there's people from all over, all over. outside of England right. also. There's, there's Scottish families that have moved to England, Irish families that have moved to England. You know, England has its own history. We're not going to do, uh, we're not going to spend the whole morning talking about British, British history. Right. But, but to cut a long story short, there's all peoples from all over England 
from outside of London that have migrated to London. It's like the, the melting pot. The melting pot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So well, it, was kids, say- it was kids from all of these different backgrounds that all saw the Wild Style movies and heard the Sugar Hill Gang and heard Melly Mel and we all got sucked into this brand new form of expression, budding culture mm-hmm. that was happening. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I went to um I went to London a couple of years ago because I was just like I need to get to London I have to go and I was really I was upset because I just figured that there'd be more black people I didn't know where to find the black people I was like where is everybody <laughs> girl wait let me ask you a question Marlo where are you from Compton. <laughs> okay, so that's is that's South Central, right? Yes. Okay, stick with the South and put it everywhere you go. You go to London, look for the South. That's where we at. <laughs> you go to listen. You go to London, look for the South. Okay, the South of everything: South Bronx, South Central. You go to London, yes. South also the South. You know what I'm saying? South London is where you find all of us. <laughs> Wow. Not, not to say not to say that we're not anywhere else, but that's right. the sure shot. Yeah, we were like, yo, we were so mad. We were like, the food is horrible. I know we find some black people. We can find good food. Girl, <laughs> the South. Just stick with that. Stick with the South. Got it. Oh. Um, How do you feel about the um about the the women in hip hop now versus the originators? Do you feel like they are? Do you feel like they don't have the skills, but they have the exposure? Or like, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about? Um, I, think, I think that, how, like, how do I do this without making it really long? Okay, I think that there are a lot more avenues for women now than there were when we were all out. Okay, so that's one, so that's one point. Let's put that to the side. Another thought of mine is, just from watching the progression of things, is um, a misconception that folks have today when they're like, oh, everybody back in the day got along and now all these girls are fighting each other. No, there's nothing new under the sun. We didn't all like each other back in the day. Stop fronting. (laughs) I hate when people, no, because I really hate when people say that because it makes, you know, I would love to be considered a saint, you know? It would just be lovely. And for, for my era to have just been so, so saintly, you know, yeah. we were all having tea time with each other. And uh, no, he wasn't. Right. Uh, no, he, no, he wasn't. You know what I'm saying? The, the, um, the East Coast girls had rivalry with the West Coast girls. You know what I'm uh, saying? For, I didn't know for that. The, so like for the, Salt and Pepper had beef with JJ Fad or something like that? Yes, absolutely they did. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You oh, hit the nail shit. on the head. Absolutely, because they thought they was biting their style. Salt right. and Pepper thought that uh, J.J. Fad was biting their style with the spandex, push it, yeah. and then J.J. Fad with the yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. I mean, no, yeah. that's um, no. three, five, oh, that's that Oak Town 357. Them too. Them too. Oak Town 357, J.J. Fad was the Sonic. Yep. All of them. But you notice J.J. Fad had the spandex. Oak Town 357 had the spandex. Salt and Pepper looking at both of them groups like, yeah. y'all, like biting. Biting. y'all biting, son. Y'all biting. Right. So, you know, absolutely there was that vibe. You know what I'm saying, Marlo? So it's like today when I see so all these conversations in the blogs and stuff like that about how, oh, back in the days, girls had more unity. And the, Don't get confused. Don't think that everybody was me, light, and Latifah. And <laughs> because you could see, you could either in a magazine or off a magazine, you could walk into a club during those times back in the days and you could see, it was quite possible you would see me, Light, Latifa, Jazzy Joyce, all of us together. But that's just because we just were actually friends. You know what I'm saying? Oh, y'all was friends? Because I, I thought that you and Latifa didn't get along anymore. Like, Oh my God. We were always, it was like, it was, you couldn't see one without the other. Yeah. First of all, Light and, Light and Latifa, you would constantly see together. Me and Latifa, you would constantly see together. Latifa and I and her two dancers shared an apartment in the co-op city in the Bronx. We lived together when we were all like 18, wow. 19. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, there was real, those were real relationships outside of music. 
You know what I'm saying? So there was that. But then there was also girls from the East Coast that thought that the girls from the West Coast was biting their style like salt and pepper, spandex, sexy, da 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 da. You know what I'm saying? So there was that. But, you know, everybody's grown up, obviously, over the years. Right. And me, for one, I've had conversations with um, the girls from Oaktown 357 and JJ Fad. And we've had conversations about how silly it was for us to be, you know, have so much rivalry against each other. But we did agree about we did agree about the spirit of um competitiveness we did yeah. agree about the competitive spirit and that being in, innate in hip-hop we did agree about that but we did sit there and laugh at each other and be like girl because now i can't go to a a, a, a classic hip-hop party and the dj totally skim over playing uh Oaktown 357's record or JJ Fad's record. I'll walk up to the DJ and be like, how you going to like, how you not going to play those two songs? They were right. like, they're staples. Right. You right. You're like, you yeah, have to I know all the words to it. Come on now. Did, did <laughs> it feel, so to your point, did, did it feel like the groups here were biting or were, did it feel like maybe they were influenced by? Cause that- I think influenced. I totally think influence. But when you're young, they, everybody's like, they no, I get it. Of course. they, like, they yeah. trying to be like me. Right. <laughs> right. And um, those were key phrases. Bite up. Right. Bite in. You know what I'm saying? Those were key, fra key phrases. And you know how that New York, you know, gut yeah. attitude. You know, you know what I'm saying? And then I'm the prodigal, the prodigal daughter. I come from a whole different country but i'm in new york so i'm claimed by new york so i'm over here with the yeah they biting they biting <laughs> son you know <laughs> so but then it took, but like then, it, but then, but then it took and then it takes when 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 the west coast produced a yo-yo and right. produced a lady of rage at that point the girls on the east coast had to step take a step back and be like wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> hold on wait one a minute. second you hold on one second. <laughs> <laughs> because right. it's like, you know, we could, we was over here like, yeah, we're kicking, we're kicking lyrics, bars, this, that, and the third, JJ Fad, they cute, they in they spandex, and blah, 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 blah. But then when you get a, when you get a yo-yo, and you get a lady of rage, yeah. which, which you, what could you do? It's a whole other thing, it's thing now. Right? Yeah. So, so, you know, so that that started to really bridge it because the first time I was scared of rage. Oh, my God. I was, <laughs> right. I was scared. I was scared to meet rage. I was like, oh, my God, I don't know if I want to meet her. I'm scared of her. And she was the sweetest person. She's the nicest, ever. She's the nicest person. She's the sweetest person ever. But she's serious about what she spits. Right, right. Right. And so that's where you get like, I'm not rough and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> she wants rough. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then when I met Yo-Yo, again, sweetness, but serious about her craft. Her, her lyrics, I like, Yo, her craft. I really, yes, I was like, I really respect these women and what they do. And it helped me to be more open-minded and be like, you know what? That's adolescent bravado BS. Drop that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Drop that. Um, so after, while the scene is starting to develop in the UK and you're getting entrenched mm -hmm in it when did you start to record when did you start doing demos who was the producer oh my god i started i started recording at 16 i got my really? record con i got my contract at 16 my parents had to sign my contract i was too young so that all that took place in the uk correct yeah yeah so then how how do you get to new york how does that happen <clears throat> well uh first of all my my label was for the united states uh, excuse me my label was for the united kingdom and for um europe Okay. And um, Benny Medina came came over with uh, the Juice Crew, you know, Shantae and Kane and <clears throat> Biz and all of them to do shows because, mm -hmm. you know, England was becoming a hot spot for fans to come out and see the shows. And the American artists knew that and the American managers knew that. And they were like, we need to go to England because there's a huge scene there and they will pay a pretty penny to come see these right. artists, which we did. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, myself and my crew, we would put on little events at our local youth centers. Mm -hmm. We would put on our own shows and people would pay like three pounds to get in or whatever, which is right. you know, nothing. And so we were developing a name for ourselves as the local, mm -hmm. uh, the local. Dope and, and, it just, and by this time you were already signed? No, that's what got me signed. That's what got you signed. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
Yeah, is because we were doing that at the same time. The scene was blowing up at the same time. Record uh, executives were out looking for talent because they saw what was happening with the music. Like, what is this music that's coming across the, the, the water and that these kids are getting into? And how come these record labels are bringing all these American artists over in this new rap scene and they're cleaning up with the shows? Oh, there's budding sh uh, hip hop artists here in England, homegrown. Where are they? Oh, they're at youth centers and community centers. We need to go investigate. We got found, myself and my crew. A guy walked in and saw our show and then pulled us to the side at the end of the show. And that's how I got signed. Wow. And, and then one time when Benny Medina was in England uh, and he was speaking to a newly acquired manager that I had gotten at the time when I was 16 and just got signed. And uh, Benny was like, I want to sign her for the, U for the United States and Canada. And so I got signed for the United States and Canada. This all happened when I was like 16 turning 17. Isn't it true that you're like the first non non US citizen to be signed to a major it, label for rap? For rap? Maybe. maybe. I never researched that, but maybe. Because I certainly did. They, I came over and finished. I did half of my album in England. I did half my album in the States. And Warner Brothers had to get me um, a work visa. A visa. Wow. Yeah. They had to get me a work visa to come over and, and complete my album. Absolutely. Did your family end up moving to the U.S. as well? Well, see, that's the thing about us Jamaicans. These are the places that we spread out to. We go to England, we go to America, and we go to Canada. And when we go to America, we usually land in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. And that's okay, a funny so thing, Marlo, what you say, what you're talking about. Marlo, what you're talking about, London, when you went to England, the black people that I saw in London were Jamaican. Wow. That's what I'm saying. Those are the places that we spread out to. So it just so happens that I already had a ton of family in the United States. My father, <clears throat> my father's um, parents were uh, settled in Brooklyn, wow. in, um, in Flatbush, in Brooklyn. Yeah. And so I had I have a ton of family spread out all in the States. They leave Jamaica and they go to all these different states here. My, my father just chose to go to England. He wasn't interested in the United States. Plus, you have to think about it, it was back when they were drafting people for Vietnam. Right. Yeah. Right. He's like, you know what? You know what? Like, oh, no, I'm good. Bye, y'all. You know what? So, no, my, my dad and my dad, my dad is... Um, my dad is uh, one of these people that's like book heavy. He reads a lot and he's very last Mr. Last Poets. And um, he's very Malcolm X and he's very like, he's, and he was like, no, I got no country with them. I'm going to go fight, fight for them. And then me can't even go, go buy a sandwich or a cup of coffee. Me not fight for them. Me not like <laughs> my dad. I appreciate that. He was like, uh, no, that'd be a no for me, dog. I won't know. Where's, where, where's your father? Where was he born? Where's Jamaica. Jamaica. Where, so my father was born in Kingston. Oh, my father was born in Ocho Rios. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, and my dad, my dad is a very militant, he's a very militant guy. And he just was like, man, I fight for nobody country and them not give me the respect. No, man, man, I do that. So, so... I would say I would think then that's where a lot of your conscious lyrics Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're from. you're you're adding the numbers up correctly. Absolutely. Yeah. My father my father thrusted me into reading about myself. And um even though we were in England and we're black people in England and the experience is is the racist experience in England is 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 slightly different. It's just basically different as far as it's like it's a cup of coffee, but it's just made differently. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? But it's right. still there. The racism right. was still there, you know, right. but it was just different. But my father kept me up to speed with what was going on in the United States by having me read books. I read, I read everything from the autobiography of Malcolm X. I read the, the whole history of the Panthers, Bobby Seale's soul on ice, you know, Eldridge Cleaver's soul on ice, Bobby Seale's book, you know what I'm saying? Um, George Jackson's solid that brother, the prison letters. I read all of this stuff at, 13 years old like why are you making me read this right you know what i mean oh, of course you on radio and wakanda then that yeah. <laughs> makes sense are you right, still so active in the um, music uh in in music in london i have their scene change has changed so much since i've left i keep tabs on it because my nephews 
are now in their twenties and they've actually taken the torch and they're like rhyming and stuff. And like they have um, grind scenes and stuff like that. It's, it's definitely evolved. So I keep up to date through them in what's going on. Cause I haven't been there. So I haven't lived there in so long. Um, so once you get your deal here, so do you, once you come here, do you just stay here now? You're, you're in New York, you have your visa. You just, you're just in New York at this point. It was a lot of work, yeah, because there was never, I would still go back to London more often so than I do now because number one, it was cheaper. Right. Um, but number two, uh, because work would bring me back a lot because I was still a brand new artist signed to the English, the British record label. So there was constantly things that I would have to fly back to do TV shows, appearances, things of this nature. And I get to, you know, I get to slide off and go home and be home, you know, and, you know, so I never stayed in hotels. It was awesome. I would just go home right. and then just go do my daily work wherever I was supposed to be, wherever the label needed me to be, whatever TV show or whatever, but I would be staying at home. So that was always cool. Um, and then, and I would come back to the States and I was, we were on tour. Like, oh my God, Latifah had us out on tour, like immediately. Like I, I was still recording my first album and Latifah's album was already out and was already doing exceedingly well. And her single Ladies First was like the, the, the treat during her show. Like people would be like, is she, is she, are they gonna do Ladies First? Right. They're not gonna do Ladies First. So they, it was like the treat. And she had her whole stage show so organized and and so damn packed that she would be like okay moni you can't even wander around backstage because we don't want to lose the element of surprise people don't know whether she's gonna bring out the the the, the uk chick and right. do ladies first or not so latifa had it so tr down she had me trained so well like a a, a, a seal right <laughs> 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 that I would not even leave the dressing room until she's already on, until Ladies First already starts. I hear her kick the first verse, and right when it's coming up to where I say, let me take it from here, Queen, that's when I would run out the dressing room and run up the stairs. Wow. I could, I could not be seen before that. Wow. That's, I, okay, first of all, I love that song, and I think <laughs> that that's one of the first songs that I've ever heard that made me proud. Yeah. It was like... I was like, uh huh, yeah. I would kick it and reverse and with a little touch of a lady. It makes you, yeah, it makes you feel like that. And I'll, t I'll give you one better, Marlo. It made me feel like that every single time I went up on stage to perform it. It never got old. To this day, it never gets old. Doc has seen me get up on stage and perform that song. And yes. I'm still having fun like it was a brand new song all over again. And I was six, 17 years old all over again. Like it makes you feel like that. So you manage school as well. Like, School, the tour, recording the album. How'd you manage all that? Mm -hmm. Well, I, in England, we, did you say school? Yes. Okay, in England, we finished school, high school, which we call secondary school. You finish when you're 16. I was done. Oh, wow. okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was done. <laughs> so, Are y'all also considered grown at 16? Definitely not, which is why my, my Jamaican parents was like very hesitant about signing my recording contract, but I'm a good kid. I was, I was always a good kid. I did my chores and trust me, Jamaican people don't play about the, don't about the chores. Right. Yeah. It's, I couldn't slide off like, no. So I was always good with my chores. I always kept my room clean. Even I wasn't the cleanest kid, but I especially knew when the weekend was coming and I wanted to go do my break dancing <laughs> or go do whatever. I would make sure that my room was spotless. I would make sure that the bathroom upstairs and downstairs was spotless. And on Sundays, I had to make the rice and peas, which actually I got in the pot doing today. Oh, too. Hey! Come on. Okay, can you FedEx some of that? Right, don't hey. freeze it. Freeze it and FedEx. Yeah, can, you zoom that? can you zoom a plate? <laughs> okay. I've been I've been cooking since I was 13 years old. That's another thing. And uh, Jamaican parents, like I was forced to stay in the kitchen and learn. My brother would be outside. I'd be like, why can't I be outside? He's outside, and my dad would be like, because he is a boy child and he's a girl <laughs> a child. <boy> child. <laughs> I want to be a boy child. A boy child. <laughs> uh, who introduced you? So Latifa, what was that first introduction like? The it first was, it was freaking that? awesome. They came over to do shows and I met them at a club called Dingwalls in town, which is in London. And it was a guy named Funkin' Klein, Dave Klein. He passed away a very long time ago. 
Um, he had, I, I'm not sure, and I don't want to get to making mistakes about what illness he had, but he had some type of a, um, illness, a, a bodily illness, a long-term illness um, that he had when I met him, but he, it never stopped him from traveling and from being the ambassador of, of hip hop, bringing groups from the United States to England mm -hmm. in the early phases of the culture penetrating England. So he bought over one time uh, Jungle Brothers, Queen Latifah, True Mathematics, wow. um, Chill Rob G. Yeah, and uh, he brought them over one time for shows and that's when I met Latifah. And he had heard about me from being, uh, you know, the British, um, there's, this, there's this British girl, she's really dope, she's up and coming, blah, blah, blah. And so he met me at Dingwall's that night and he introduced me to Latifah that night, as well as the Jungle Brothers, True Mathematics and Cheryl Rob G. And wow. was it like anything like, they was like, like they show in the movies, they'd be like, you know, Queen Latifah, Moni, this is Queen, Queen, this is Moni, how you feeling, how you feeling? So I heard you rap, spit something. You like not immediately. <laughs> not immediately. She didn't. She, she didn't. She, no, Marlo. But you're right, though. She didn't ask me immediately. She asked me be, like maybe a few days later because after that night, um, Funk and Klein, they had drove over on the ferry on a tour bus that they had acquired in Germany, and they had this German bus driver that didn't make know where the hell he was going in London, in England. And so Funk and Klein was like, "Would you mind like riding with us to a few shows and helping us get wherever?" So I got the maps out. Mm -hmm. And I sat on their tour bus for like a, mm -hmm. like two weeks around England, with the with the, sitting up front of the bus with the with the maps, helping them get to all their different shows in and around wow. England, even when they wow. left London. Wow! So it was at a show in Bristol that Latifa finally asked me. She was like, "I heard you spit." She was like, "Let me hear something." We were in her dressing room before they went on, so I started rhyming to her, and she was like. Yo, we need to do a song together. Wow. Shut up. I swear the to God. Time you spit to her, she says, we need to do a song together. Yeah. Oh, well, shit. Hell, that's it. But guess <laughs> what? But guess what? The song didn't happen until maybe a good eight months later. Mm -hmm. mm. It, like she, But she manifested it she in her mind. In her mind. Right, right. Yeah, well, that, that was Ladies First? That was Ladies First. Damn. Wow. So when ladies first when, when it finally comes out, do you real do you think like, no, this, this this shit is hot and and it's gonna get the reaction that it did? Did you feel okay. that way? Yes and no. Mm -mm. I knew it was dope. And the reason why I knew it was dope is because it felt good. The studio session felt good. Mm -hmm. It the whole studio session felt dope. Like she's dope. Like right. she's majestic, yo. Like she she says some stuff that just be like. I love reciting everything right. that comes out of her mouth. I feel, I feel empowered saying her lines. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that was already dope. But then the excitement in the studio, we, we kept writing stuff and running back across the room to each other like, yo, listen to this. And then I'd say my manager, yeah, that's dope. And then she'd be like, listen to this. And then I'd be, oh, that's dope. And we just kept doing that. And like, I'm, I'm sure the engineer at the time was sitting there looking at us like, can y'all just sit down and write y'all rhymes and, and just get it done? And, Every four lines, y'all are sharing with each other. <laughs> but, but we were it, we were excited. It was exciting. The whole mood of that song and that studio session was just exciting. So I knew it was going to be dope. What I didn't know, Doc Marlowe and Smooth D, what I did not know was the reaction that it was going to get. I really didn't. Now, I think Latifa may have had some inkling of, yes, this is going to be Anthem. This is... I didn't. I just knew it was going to be a dope song and it felt good, but Lord have mercy. People took that song and to this day still take that song to heart. Yeah. Still. I'm one of them. Yeah. I'm and one of them. I had, I had no idea that it was really going to impact, bust through skin yeah. into heart cavities right. like that. Right. <laughs> you know what's crazy about it is that the song itself, it, make, it makes me feel like like you guys are two different stages of women, right? It's like um, Queen Latifah is, the, you know, the mature, you know, she's been through it, you know, I'm just gonna, this is what I'm gonna say and this is how I feel. And then you come through, like, you know, you the scrappy, you like, yo, I'm in there, I'm ready, I'm ready. And this, I feel the same way, but this is how I'm <laughs> express it. 
I was like, yo. But see, that's, you, you hit the nail on the head again, Marlo. That's that majesticness that Latifah gives off. That's that majesticness. And that's the same fire and vibe that fueled me to write mm -hmm. that song with her. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's because I was just like, oh, <laughs> like sh she's the queen, she's the majesty. Yeah, I'm with you. I got you. I got you. Anything that comes, like I got it. Like, you know. What but that mean? was the dull part because yeah. you were like, let me take it from here, queen. I got it from here, right? I got right. It. But it almost came out. Have you guys seen that Key and Peele sketch with um Barack Obama and uh, his his uh, translator, his anger translator? Mm -mm. It's like the person that comes in and it's like, you know, no, let me, let me get it. Cause she, she's not saying what y'all need to hear is, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you're like, I hear you trying to be all, you know, uh, you know, prim and proper, but let me go ahead and get, let me get exactly. this Exactly. And that was, that was it. That was it. I was like, all right, let me get my hands dirty. Let me get my hands dirty. Let me get them. <laughs> all right. So I have a question for you, for you, Moni. Um, you brought up a few names, um, Light, Yo-Yo, Rage. What comes to mind is um, a show a while back when Doc was managing a club a few years ago, and there was a show that was in the works right. called The Hip Hop Sisters. Why didn't that see the light of day in your mind? I have no idea. I never even saw the, we filmed a pilot. We actually filmed a pilot, and uh, which some of the footage from a show that Doc had put on yeah. uh, at the time. Uh, so some of the footage from that show was, was used for the pilot or what have you, but I never even saw the pilot. It was for BET, BET commissioned for us to do the pilot. Um, and I just, it may be a, a few months down the line, mm -hmm. um, Light had contacted all of us and, and was like, you know, BET basically passed on it. They decided that they were at that time going to lean more towards um, male friendly content. And, um, you know, that, that well, show wasn't, that, what, that show wasn't going to fit into their, uh, the, the, the new structure that they were planning. So basically, you know, we were just told that they passed on it and that was that. Yeah. Maybe they need to revisit because see no. what they, they took them, it took them into a whole spiral down, spiral down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but when like, you think, oh, bad idea. Yeah. yeah. But Marlo, I mean, but they did kind of take that concept and flip it a little bit. I agree. With what? With the whole ladies' night thing, ladies, with ladies, yeah. Peppa and SWV. And oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they did kind of. That. They did eventually. They did eventually right. revisit the idea because when I saw that that show was coming out, I was like, okay, that's pretty much it. Right. That's pretty right. much it. Yeah. Um. After the success of um, Ladies First, did you feel pressure when it was time? You know, when now you work on your album and gonna release you know, your stuff by yourself. Did you feel like, damn, I got so much to live. I, I have so much to live up to because of the success of that. Like, what was, no. what was that like? No, I never felt that pressure. You never I never, I didn't, no, I didn't. I was because I was, um, my album was being done at the, like, um, at the same time. Same time. Uh -huh. Yeah, but Latifah's project was nearer finished than mine was. Right. And so, which is why her project came out first and which is why I went on tour with her mm -hmm. first. But in between, while I was on tour with Latifah, I would be dipping out sometimes when we would have two days off here or two days off there. I would be flying back to New York to go into the studio to complete songs for my own album. Right. Yeah, um, so, and, so no, I never, for me, it was like once you're in a creative space as far as writing, um, for me, I never, I was always able to appreciate everybody else's art for their art. And I was also still able to focus on what made me me mm -hmm. and, and make sure that I deliver that on my own project. So I never felt that type of pressure. Personally, I didn't. Right, right. Well, um, Go ahead, Marla. You, I'm sorry. You being in radio actually absolutely makes sense because you've been in the industry for so long. Um, do you, are you working on new music or new anything to get you back? You know what, Marlo? You know what I've done over the years? I'll tell you what, Marlo. Over the years, I have done a lot of guesting on a lot of my underground brothers' projects. Like, and not even underground, just a lot of real goat, dope MCs projects, because that's where my heart is. Um, I've done, I've done songs with, um, 
Elder Sensei, Elder Sensei and the Artifacts. I've done so. I got songs with Raz. You got songs with Raz Cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah me and Raz got songs. Right. Yeah, because that's my boy, and and these are all people that I have relationships with, and I've known. For, yeah, oh my God, I met Raz when he was the brand new little prodigal son boy, <laughs> MC genius guy, the young yeah. fresh face. I knew you him know, since. You didn't know Raz used, used to be a dancer. Never knew that. His his he dancer name was Raisin. A dancer. His dancer name is Raisin. <laughs> Next time you talk to him, call him Raisin. Call him Raisin. <laughs> call him Raisin. What up, Raisin? I know Raz. I need you. Yeah. Okay, I need you to expect a call from him today because as soon as I get off from you, Raisin. I'm texting him. Yo, Raisin. Raisin. Yes, that's his first name, and he was dope. He could do back flips, like flip after flip after flip. He was really really dope. I known him for. Raz way before he started rapping. Yo, that's crazy. And that's my boy. And so to this day, I still, these are the type of people that can call me up and be like, Mo, I need you, I need a 16 from you. And I'm like, all right, send me the track. Right, right. Just like, you know, just like that. Those are the types of folks, yeah. you know what I'm you saying? So that's, like, uh -huh. so that's what I've been doing over the years. My own project, um, in 2015, I put together a girl group to highlight girls from different cities. And that was called Heresy. And so there was a, a girl from um, Orlando, there was a girl from Ohio, there was a girl from South Carolina, and then there was me, and we was Heresy, and we, we did an EP. That's on iTunes, you could still check that out, but that was an amazing project. It was fun to do. Um, I've never been in a girl group before, so putting that together was dope. Um, and then my own EP, I was supposed to be, writing and in the studio recording well the writing part's fine but the recording part i haven't been able to do that because studios are shut down right um but that was supposed to be for summer this year it won't be for summer this year it won't be on time for summer this year it will be more towards the end of the year because it's, it's going to be a minute before i can get in and actually record stuff so are you satisfied are, are you satisfied say you weren't ever you weren't able to record again are you, you satisfied with the body of work that you've accomplished thus far, like, are you fine with that? Or do you still feel like I still have some something to say and I still feel like I want to continue to be an artist? Well, I, can, I definitely, I can't shake being an artist for the simple reason that the, the creative, um, the creativity is, is in my bloodline. Yeah. So it's like, you, you can't, even if you think you have shut it down, something will happen. Somebody will be playing something. One of my kids might, you know, I have one daughter that writes music and then another daughter that produces music and I'll hear them tinkering at something and I'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then I'll, I'll start, you know what I'm saying? And then I'll start kicking some rhymes or whatever. And it's not, it's involuntary. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So I can, I can never shake being an artist. As far as am I satisfied with my body of work, yeah, and I think some people would be like, oh my God, you could have did so much more. I could have, but I'm definitely happy with what I've done because it's really etched itself a spot in the tree of, uh, of hip hop. Mm -hmm. Like this is the girl that came from England that followed the culture, that earned the respect of all of her peers in the belly of the beast where the culture comes from. She doesn't right. even come from this country. You know what I'm saying? And, and to look back and be like, wow. And then to look back and be like, I am actually a part of the native tongues. Right. Like, what? Oh, that's crazy. Right. Like, right. what? Like, like how, how did that, that, do like, that? How did that happen? Yeah. How did that happen? Like, I look back at that and I'm like, oh my God, I was part of, I am a part of one of the greatest um, um, groups of, of, of individuals. Absolutely. 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 And I'm like, oh my God, to be spoken about in this, in some of the same sentences as a tricor quest and, and, and De La Soul and the Jungle Brothers, and the I'm, Jungle like, Brothers yeah. I'm like, shit, my name's being mentioned. Like, this is nuts. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So when I look back, I'm like, yeah. And then, and then for my second album experience to be, to have Questlove have a conversation on his lives during this quarantine, playing music and being like, this is when Prince produced for Moni Love. And, right. and, Moni Love. and I'm like, I'm sitting on his lives like, oh my God, he's talking about me. That's me. Right. Like Prince I'm produced so on my humble. album. That's, that's oh, you're such a humble person. I wouldn't be as humble if I had your accolades. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I started this shit, y'all welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, it's, it's, wait, what, it's, I have two. Two, two questions, and this is my last, I promise. 
One, how'd you feel about Dana Dan and his accent when you were like, okay, when it, when, because I didn't know that he wasn't from London until later. How did you feel about him and the accent? Irritated at first. <laughs> Irritated at first, but then once, once I got to know him, he is the quintessential gentleman. It makes sense. Right. Like, he should have been born in England. <laughs> <laughs> because he's such a gentle, he's so dapper all the time. To this day, he has to have his clean can go and his clean this and his clean that. And I'm just, I'm looking at him like, you're such a snob. Like, <laughs> you're so Dana is such a snob, so it makes sense to me. All the whole British aspect of his whole aura. Did makes you recognize sense. it from recognizing that it was fake initially? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, they were like, oh, that doesn't even sound real. Get out of here. <laughs> Abs absolutely. Because I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't talk like we don't say you're that. Like, you're a fraud. That's not something we say, Dana. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean it's not Dana dying? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and lastly, tell us the, a crazy, like this, a story of something crazy that you were a part of that, or that happened that you saw. Okay, <clears throat> we're in Virginia, we're on tour. It's the Big Daddy Kane tour. The groups on the tour are, of course, Big Daddy Kane, he's headlining, Third Base, Digital Underground, um, and Queen Latifah. I'm part of Queen Latifah's camp. It would, the, the, the tour lasted about three months, four months, um, and we would have breaks in between. We were in Virginia one night, and every city that we would get to, there was this ongoing water fight going on between all of the groups. So every city that we would pull into, the first thing everybody would try to do when they finished sound check is get to a mall immediately and buy, buy some super soakers, bazookas, like whatever, right? and fill them up and get ready for the war, okay? With every group warring against each other, okay? And one night, Latifah's two dancers, Latifah and myself, caught Tupac walking around the hotel parking lot by himself. Oh. We kidnapped him. <gasps> we, we kidnapped him. We took him to the back of the parking lot. We hog tied him, hands together legs together we had him on the floor we were dressed in black garbage bags <laughs> <laughs> couldn't quite get to the fatigue so we were dressed in black garbage bags with lipstick on our faces like this <laughs> right and we stood over tupac and let off on him water 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 and he's like, help! And then, I'm, <laughs> and then I'm kneeling on him. I got my hand, yes, Popsy, that's my grandson. I got my hands over his mouth, gagging him, we're beating him, belting him with water, 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 water. And then we left him drenched in the parking lot, rampant in our room. And that's us getting back at Digital Underground for catching us off guard in the city oh before, the, the last city that we were in. So that's what- That's classic. That is <laughs> classic. Um, <laughs> Absolutely not. So that's great. Well, you've been in radio now <laughs> how long? Who'd you say? How, you've been in radio for how long now, totality? Since, since 93. Since, since 93. Mm -hmm. Wow. Do you find radio to be addicting? Um, I just love it because it's, a, it's a, um, an extension. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a hug extension for me. I get to talk to several people all over the place, just all at once. You no, know, and and I don't. I'm not. I'm not bossy or preachy or anything like that. But I do try to let out cultural blurbs whenever I can, wherever I can. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Without being dictatorish, and also incorporating the vibe of the music that I'm playing. Because the format that I'm at right now is all that good R&B that was out when 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 I was out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and and. Since I've been there also, they blend in a lot of my era hip hop. And right. especially in the, in, in the mix that I get to do at uh, six o'clock every day, it's, it's all blended in there. It's like listening to a radio station from uh, the end of the 80s, the beginning of the 90s. It's like listening to a format from then. Wow. So And I get to, I get to do this. I enjoy it. I right. really do. I know, and I really I, do. When I see you on your live, you're so excited. Your lips always look immaculate because the lipstick is always the right color. You're just, 
Are you shooting your shot, dog? No, I show, I mean, no, Yo, no, 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 wait, wait. Ain't that what? the same equivalent to what he was saying that you were saying about dude last time? Uh, ain't that, ain't that, that? Uh, It's so Thank different. You. That's it's, exactly why I said it. It's so different because so I actually, I, I, I know Moni, so it's not. I don't mean you ain't shot your shot. You ain't shot your shot. You well, sound like you always so You know your lips look always suckling. It is, and, hey. Um, <laughs> go look at Moni when she's on the next time she does it live. You're like, even you, Marley, you're like, damn, them lips do look, <laughs> they look, do look kind of good. They write, the colors be right. They be, it's yeah, but that's why, that's why I'm going I'm to text Marlo on the low and tell her what product it is. That's just, yes, uh, thank you. Go on, it's the pop as well. Yes. <laughs> and you just always, your energy, Moan, every time I see you, you're just always just so happy and like, and just enjoying life. And especially in these times, you yeah. just, you could tell like, you enjoy doing it and how much that music means to you. Absolutely. Yet, you know, your interaction with folks that are watching you and folks that are listening to you. Um, so what's next? What do you want to do next? You're doing radio, but what is the next? Release my memoirs, Doc. I've been sitting on them. Yeah, Ooh. I got to, I got to, yeah, I got to. She got some stories. That Tupac, that Tupac water fight story was just the tip of the iceberg. I, I got and in what form, Moni, is it book form? Or is it, because I think it would be so dope to hear those stories in your voice, like an audio book, just because. I will, you know, so many people have been suggesting that I should do that also. So I'm thinking about actually doing that. I don't know, I've never actually gone to a studio and done the whole reading for an audio book, but I think that that's something that I'm gonna probably do, because you're not the first person. I think it should be a show. I think it should be a show. I think it should be a show of you and your studio and you telling the story. And then like, you know, like drunk history, there's people acting out the story. <laughs> You watched that too? Oh my God! I love Drunk History. I love Drunk History. I love it. Yes. Oh my God! <laughs> that's yeah, that's what I mean. You know what? And we won't take that any further than this, Doc. You can patent that, and 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 we can. We, you know what I'm saying? You I already wrote it. It's, I already wrote it down. <laughs> I, mean, I would be with your Executive attorney. Executive producer Marlowe. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Um, like I said, I won't be humble at all. Excuse me. Oh, thanks. Who are you with? Are you supposed to be on set? Excuse me. This was really dope. I appreciate you taking the time to rock with us. So yes, thank you. Um, no, this is cool. How can folks find you? So give everyone your social media stuff if they don't. Just, know. It's the same thing on every platform. It's it's the oh. real Moni Love. D A Real Moni M O N I E Love, and it's the same on every platform. Yeah. And you're on the radio every day from what time to what's your time slot? From two to seven on um, Kiss One Hundred Four Point One in Atlanta, and you can listen via iHeartRadio, right. or you can download that. You can download the Kiss One Hundred Four Point One app and um, listen. So wherever you are, you can listen. Well, man, How about that? I was on house party with Ed Lover last night, and I was, and I, I, I wish I would have told him that I was going to interview you today. I forgot. <laughs> but, um, I was like, yep. I'm gonna get back on tonight, and I'm gonna be like, you know who I interviewed? <laughs> 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 Absolutely. So dope, Mo. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm gonna continue to rock, you know, rock with you, support you in in every way possible. You're, it's always great to talk I to you. Thank you. So this is over, Doc. You gotta put. You gotta bring us girls back together and and bring I'm, us, bring us I back. I promise you, as I am in front of you, I'm working on something literally right now. She said us, so... Um, no, not you, Marlo. Let me block her off. No, not you. Girls, can you I, two. Us <laughs> and not that life. shoulder. Not that <laughs> shoulder. Mo, thanks so much. And no problem. Thank you, Mo. Money love. You got it, Marlo. Smooth Thank D. You so much. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.